Pod 14 has now arrived. Good morning, Maurizio. Welcome back to the Serapis. Come meet me in the lab when you're ready. Good morning, Dave. I've just boarded the Serapis. I'll be there in a few minutes. Dave, how are we doing? All systems ready. Just checking the micro cameras. Do we have enough coverage? This is for the public travel log. I'm already recording. Come and have a look. We are going to leave Earth orbit in about an hour, on a long voyage to meet the source of the Santorio anomaly. On this voyage, we will be visiting several of the more interesting objects in space, and we'll be using this travel log to tell you about them. Our moon. Its mass is just 1% of the Earth's mass, and its diameter one-fourth of the Earth's diameter. All the craters you see have been created by the impact of thousands of meteorites. On Earth, meteorites usually burn up when they cross the atmosphere, but with no atmosphere here, the meteorites have hit the lunar surface hard. Those dark regions are called maria, from the Latin word that means seas. They were formed by the flow of dark lava onto lowland areas, back when the moon still had active volcanoes. More than 4 billion years ago, the Earth was hit by a celestial body, perhaps as big as Mars. The two objects fused together, but a lot of material was thrown off and went into orbit around the new, bigger Earth, and eventually came together to form the Moon. We have had a permanent base on the Moon for over a decade. It's located on Malaper Mountain, near the rim of Shackleton Crater, towards the South Pole. This location was chosen because it's almost always in sunlight, and we can use solar energy to power the base. Hi John, Mauricio from Spaceship Setup is here. Nice to see you Mauri. John Moore's University heading to somewhere interesting? Going after the Santoria Anomaly. How are things going? There are a couple of astronauts working hard in Shackleton Crater. I've sent two men to fix the infrared telescope. The lads on Earth haven't been getting any signal during the last couple of days and are starting to complain. I've got another team out to fix one of the shields. We got hit by a few micrometeoroids during the last couple of days. Luckily, we didn't get any major damage. It sounds like you are going through a bad patch. Just a few days ago, you were complaining about electrical faults due to the solar wind. Maori. These are the secret pleasures of this job, but at least we're doing well with helium-free harvesting, and the cargo link between the extraction stations on the far side and the launching pads on the equator is working like clockwork. The fusion reactors on Earth have never been so well fed. Good luck, John. You are close to the end of your shift, aren't you? Two weeks and counting, Maori. Take good care of yourself. Mars is fast approaching. It is smaller than Earth, but definitely bigger than the Moon. Its atmosphere is almost all carbon dioxide, poisonous for us. During the day, it can be nice and warm, up to 30 degrees Celsius, like summer in the Mediterranean, but it gets also very cold at night. The minimum temperatures are around minus 130 degrees, much, much colder than Antarctic and winter. Dave, are there any drones scanning the surface? At least two. They're still going strong after two years of surveys. I can get the video feed. Mars has mountains and canyons like Earth. The largest mountain known in the solar system is Olympus Mons, here on Mars. It is twice the height of Mount Everest. There is water right below the surface, and in the past it has been warm and wet for long periods. There were even rivers flowing and craters filled with water.
Every 20 years, Jupiter and Saturn line up with Earth, and we can fly close to each of them on our way out of the solar system. Here we have Jupiter, majestic, isn't it? The biggest planet in the solar system. It contains more than twice the mass of all other planets combined, and has over 60 satellites. Look at those beautiful bands of different colors and the great red spot. The dark bands are sinking cool gas, the light bands are rising warm gas. The red spot is larger than the Earth and is made of cold clouds. Jupiter is a giant ball of gas made of hydrogen and helium. Its surface is not solid, you cannot land and walk on this planet. Like Earth, Jupiter's magnetic field traps some electrically charged particles from the solar wind. These particles are accelerated to high speeds and emit radiation at radio frequencies. Let's listen to some sounds of Jupiter. Beautiful! Look at those rings! Also Jupiter, Uranus and Neptune have rings, but Saturn's ones are the most spectacular. They are made of small grains and bigger rocks, more than a meter across. We are not yet sure of how they formed. Maybe it was one of its many satellites shuttled in a collision with a passing asteroid. Or maybe it was a bigger object from the outer solar system approaching the planet that was destroyed by Saturn's gravitational force. Saturn is made of gas, like Jupiter, but smaller. After we leave Saturn's gravitational pull, we are going to fly close to Uranus first and then Neptune, the other two gas planets of the solar system. They are smaller than Saturn in mass and size and have rings. Neptune has an unusual blue surface due to the presence of methane and a great dark spot similar to the red spot on Jupiter. Images from the past have shown that the dark spot sometimes disappears for many years before showing up again. We are well beyond the heliopause, the region where the sun's influence ends and interstellar space begins. Starting to scan for the wormhole entry point. There's something out there. It's artificial. The sensors are feeding data to the computer. That's a Voyager spacecraft, Voyager 2. I was expecting to cross its path before reaching the wormhole. Voyager 2 was launched in August 1977 when Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus and Neptune were in a favourable configuration. It could swing from one planet to the other without the need of a large propulsion system. Voyager 2 approached Jupiter in 1979, Saturn in 1980, Uranus in 1986 and Neptune in 1989. It's been the first space probe to send back to Earth pictures of Uranus and Neptune. Did you get a detailed scan of the probe? There should be a 12-inch gold-plated disc containing sounds and images of life on Earth. It's attached to the body of the spacecraft. It's still there. All deep space probes launched in the 20th century are like protected species. No one's allowed to recover them and put them on display in some museum. 